Hello my friends, for quite a while now I've struggled creating a powerful computer that could play early and late Windows XP games with very high settings, anti-aliasing, EAX and most importantly all of this by using at least 120Hz on my modern LCD monitor. The big problem until now was NVIDIA, the drivers for newer video cards simply didn't allow for high refresh rates, because, but Radeon jumped to the rescue like I'm going to show you right now. These are all the components, a nice blend of black and blue with some nice vibes for me and you. I've used the GeForce GTX 960 in the past but I was not satisfied with the compatibility and I couldn't use more than 60Hz at high resolutions. That's why I've upgraded to a Radeon HD 6950 from XFX, a dirty one to be sure but sometimes dirty does the trick. It has a dual fan cooling solution with some nice copper heat pipes added for extra cooling, a double dissipation technology they say. It has two DVI outputs, one being marked as having VGA support which is perfect for some CRT gaming madness, if and when required, DVI for my old LCDs and two mini display ports version 1.2 for connecting the computer to my modern displays. The backbone of this computer is an amazing motherboard from Intel. Yes, a motherboard made by Intel, the Intel DX58SO Extreme more exactly, a board that had a cost of $250 in 2008. After the success of Core 2, Intel moved to a brand new architecture, uh, this one called Nihalem, and these are some major differences between the two platforms. Nihalem has level 3 cache, it has an integrated memory controller, which means that the memory controller is on the CPU die not on the motherboard, which translates into faster access times. We have triple channel memory support with this new platform, although in practice the performance differences are not that big when compared to just using dual channel memory. We don't have a front side bus anymore, we have QPI, Intel Quick Path Interconnect for increased bandwidth marketing. But then we have two very important features, hyper trading is back, yay! Nihalem is that smart child of Pentium 4 and Conroe, uh, bless his core. With hyperthreading we now have 4 cores and 8 threads, useful to brag to your friends when at your place. And finally, Turbo Boost, the poor man overclocking. The board has Crossfire support, but Crossfire was already obsolete in the year it was released, so let's move on. The CPU is an Intel i5-960, it has the Bloomfield core, 3.2GHz with a turbo boost of 346 it has 4 cores and this is a proper quad core, unlike core 2 quads which had dual cores stitched together, and it also supports hyper threading, so we have 8 threads in total. The motherboard and the CPU were received from a friend of this channel. Thank you my friend, I was dreaming of an Ehalem platform for ages, and now here I am. The CPU is kept cool by this Arctic Freezer 7 Pro cooler, a favorite of mine over the years, and although it's not pitch black, uh, maybe in the future I will do some paint jobs for the fan, yellow maybe? I'll be using 3 sticks of DDR3 memory for a total of 12 GB, overkill, yes, but my brain needs triple channel, if I have it, I must use it, otherwise I won't be able to sleep at night. For the power supply I'm going with an almost new bronze Seasonic 550 watts because I don't want fireworks inside my room. Then we have the usual stuff, some fans, optical drive for CD games and the 240GB SSD. The GPU is dirty, it has dirt and probably the paste is rock solid, I'm not taking any chances with these HD video cards as they run hot, so cleaning it is. The Radeon HD 6950 was released in 2010 with a price of around $300 and the specs make this card more than enough for any Windows XP game. 2GB of GDDR5 memory clocked at 5GHz with a memory bandwidth of 160GB. For reference, a good video card from Windows XP, the G4 6800, had 22GB per second. The GPU runs at 800MHz, it has 1400 shading units and it supports DirectX 11.2 and shader model 5.0. The case had a weird tobacco smell and so it needed some well deserved and well applied cleaning process. I did not hold back and in the end I think that I got the job done, with a great degree of success I might add. 
Adding the cooler was very easy. Just plug the four plastic things into the motherboard and screw the screws. I've never built a computer with triple channel, but it seems to be very easy. Just stick three memory modules in the three slots of the same color. Awesome. Ok, I am ready. Let's add everything in place and power this bad boy. Uh, finally, it's been too long. First post, not posting. Try with one stick of RAM, it works. Ok, I managed to enter the BIOS, everything seems ok, let's add the other RAM modules again. It seems that if you have enough patience, the computer will post, it really likes to take its time. The BIOS seems to have plenty of options for whatever needs I might have. We have an i5-960, I can use 1, 2 or 4 cores which is nice, maybe 2 cores would offer the best performance. I am disabling hyper threading, I don't need it. This is just a gaming machine. 12 GB of system memory, of which only 3.2 will be recognized by Windows XP. Options, other options, other other options, 42 degrees Celsius for the CPU, 50 for the VRMs, 41 ambient and 64 IOH, uh, the Nord Bridge. And here we have the good stuff. I don't know if it's useful to overclock the CPU, we'll see. Uh, but what do we have here? Guys, frame this please. An Intel motherboard from 2008 that allows you to enable it to use more voltage than reported. At least it comes with a warning, the CPU gets hotter. Let's leave it at disable for now. I like my components like I like my summer days, stock as in uninteresting and cold. The OS install was smooth, no issues whatsoever. The only issue I had was with the Radeon drivers, shocking right? It would not install because the driver package is not signed. Well, I've installed the driver manually and there you go, problem fixed, uh, almost. Minor inconveniences, it just needed a restart. Like I've said, the video card has analog output and although I don't know what I'm doing in this game, which by the way is Age of Wonders 1, the video card knows, the output is clean. I'm using 1024x768 60Hz and everything is in place, in place for some clickbait nostalgia in a future video. I have some issues with the game, some textures are flickering, old game, new drivers, sometimes you might end up with stuff like this. Serious on the first encounter runs great, no need to show the frame rate, obviously. The game is very fast paced and for maximum enjoyment you'll need a proper CRT and by proper I mean 19 inch. 1600 by 1200 at least 85 hertz. I hope the video card output can handle that. If you want to see the best CRSM review on the internet, click the top right link or click the link from the description. So this computer has my CRT covered. Let's move to the main reason I've built the computer. And I can use 2560 by 1440 at 120 hertz in Windows XP. How cool is that? Also, because this display has 1440 vertical pixels, I can very well play games at 1600 by 1200 or 1920 by 1200. And this is not all. I'm telling you, this system keeps giving. Radeon cards in Windows XP can use various scaling options. And you can also scale the game using the GPU, which in theory should have better results than just scaling with the monitor. Uh, don't quote me on that. We have three scaling options. Stretch the image on the entire screen, uh, yikes, this is for the weird geeks. Then show the resolution on a one-on-one -on -one scale like this. 
I'm using 1024 by 768 and the game uses only those pixels, literally, no scaling, no stretching, nothing. And finally, the third option is to scale the game vertically to 1440 pixels and have black bars left and right. It looks like this. And although some games might look weird because of the whole LCD scaling thingy, most look pretty good. Doom 3 is one of the more modern games that does not support widescreen, so the resolution is 1600 by 1200 and the game looks amazing and runs great. I'm using 8x anti-aliasing with super sample anti-aliasing and 16x anisotropic, a maximum video game settings of course. As you can see the FPS is capped at 60 FPS and it does not drop at all. By the way, this is the disc version. The CPU sits at around 64 degrees Celsius and as far as I know, this is a decent temperature for this CPU. It has 4 physical cores and it seems that Doom 3 uses only 2 of them, which is decent for a game from 2004. The GPU is quite cool, 63 degrees, mainly because the usage is around 10-20% most of the time. For fear, I've disabled super sampling and copied the DirectX input file. First, the GPU reaches 76 degrees because it stays at over 90% usage all the time. Quite a demanding game. Unfortunately, Fear uses only one core, such a pity. The game has great physics, at least those should be transferred to a second core. Anyways, the FPS is amazing, around 80-90 during combat, with some drops to 50 in the most intense scenes. I did not encounter any stutters, hitches or glitches, nor glitches. I'm using the disc version and Fear supports 2560 by 1440. Need for Speed Pro Street on the other hand supports a maximum of 1920 by 1200. It's still better than just 1080p. With everything set to max, Pro Street has around 80 FPS and I around zero skill in this game. Jumping from underground to this made me question reality. I forgot how different this was. After choosing a Lamborghini Murcielago, I've managed to do some good driving, with the GPU sitting at 99%, reaching almost 80 degrees, and the CPU over 70. This game exacts a heavy toll on this system, and it also seems to be using more than two CPU cores. Well done. But this computer can very well play some more modern games, and I've chosen four games from a recent video, that is not on this channel, to give it a spin. All of these are Steam games running on Windows 10 at 1080p. Mass Effect 2 runs at 60 FPS, no sweat, 60 degrees for both the CPU and the GPU, and the CPU is turbo boosted from 3.2 to 3.33 GHz, yeah, thanks for nothing. The game is clearly multi-core optimized, I'm not so versed in 2010's games, so there you go. Please excuse my ignorance, but I find it funny that a game from 2010 is a Pixel Shader 3.0 and DirectX 9.0C game. Borderlands 2 is more demanding. I've dropped to 8x anisotroping and no anti-aliasing. 60 FPS. Great. The CPU is really doing the heavy lifting here. All cores are over 50% usage. This is what I want to see from all games. Good optimization. During combat we have drops to 40 or even 20 FPS, but no stutters, so we're good. As one that I've just started with Borderlands 2, this mechanic of fight for your life is absolutely amazing. Hats off to the developers. Also, the visual style is simply gorgeous. Clean and tight, an absolute joy to watch. Speaking about beauty, few can compare to Bioshock Infinite, and for this one I won't bother you with technicalities, but rather enjoy the fantasies. The vibe and the textures and the lights and the colors that this game brings into our dull lives. And, of course, the star of the show, uh, The Dark Knight Running Batman, Arkham City. Now, the cycle is complete. The son becomes the father and the father becomes the son, the last son of Odin. It looks, runs and plays amazing. And now, just a side note. You don't need $2000 computers to play amazing games. I've been doing exactly that with a $200 one, on Steam and Windows 10, you're welcome. It's more to this computer of course and I already have some things that need to be added or improved, some yellow fans and maybe some yellow paints. The rear fan does not work, look at this. So I'll need to replace it and maybe add two other fans on top, I'm sure that for now I have a bad airflow in the case, maybe with better airflow I'll drop the temps by 5 degrees. 
Thank you all for watching and until next time have fun playing old games at absurd settings and be nostalgic.